the single image that deploys everywhere. That's the holy grail when it comes to Windows desktop deployment. And it's available these days. It's something you can actually create if you have the right driver database. In this micro nugget on the 70-415 exam, I talk a little bit about Windows deployment services and exactly those driver databases that will get you to single image deployment. I told you that plug and play actually allows you to uh, interrogate a system, figure out what all the different driver IDs are on that system, and see if you have matching driver IDs in your database. Now, WDS has what is essentially, you know, it has one database, and any machine that you deploy uh, an image to will use that database for all of its you know, verification to see if it has any drivers that need to be installed. Here under the drivers node, you'll see we have a package that's been created, or a group that's been created called driver group one. And then we can also just take a look at all the packages that are built into the system. You can think of this as just a big database. Now, in order for our drivers to be injected into this, this database, we have to get them unpacked into their most uh, elementary form. Right? You know, you get drivers off the internet, and they come, and they're probably in a zip file. And then you unpack the zip file, and it, comes, it becomes an exe file. Well, when you double click the exe file, it actually unpacks sometimes again to the, the, the most basic of form, which are the, the CAB files and the INF files and the actual driver itself. It's that format that WDS needs if you're going to inject these things into itself and into its database. If I take a look here at the uh, IT share that we've created, I've actually added a new folder here called drivers. And in it, I've added one of the, the drivers that's built into VMware Workstation 9, and that's the SCSI driver. If you search in your installation of VMware Workstation, if you're actually following along with VMware Workstation, you'll find an ISO file called windows.iso. If you open that up in your favorite ISO reader, you'll find this SCSI driver that exists somewhere in that location. And there sits the four files that correspond to this SCSI driver. So there's a, there's a cat file here. There is an INF file here. There's the OEM file and then the system file itself. The INF file is the human readable form of the, the driver itself. A lot of times you'll see these because this is what instructs Windows how to put all the driver pieces in place so that they function correctly. It is this format that you have to have those drivers found or, or, or unpacked into for these things to work here in WDS. What's great, however, is that once you've gone through and unpacked all of your driver files in your IT file share somewhere, you can actually point WDS at the root of that driver's location and have it just simply add all the drivers from a specific folder and all the subfolders as well. If you're like me, you've got a pretty big drivers folder for all the machines you've got and all the different you know, video card, audio card, what have you. Just get them unpacked, put them in their regular location, and then point WDS to that location, and it will find all the drivers that it can there in your drivers share. Make your life much easier on yourself. Choose OK, and next it will find that driver. There's the one that exists there, that vmscuzzy.inf file. Choose next, and next and finally next again, and that will actually import in the driver. When you import it in, you have the option of just putting it in the regular pool of drivers, or you can actually separate out those drivers into driver groups. So we could call this uh, VMW9 as our driver group, for example. Want to learn more? Check out cptnuggets.com.